introduce her to Facebook Live, and then you're going to hear the word of the Lord. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson with Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral in the city of Los Angeles and on Conference Line and Facebook Live. It is my joy today to introduce to some and present to others my companion, my wife, Evangelist Francis Anderson, who's coming to us today with the word of the Lord. Hear ye her. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you. Praise and thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Thanking God again for allowing me to be alive on another day. Amen. God is a good God. He's an awesome God. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. He's a generous God. He's a sweet God. Hallelujah. He's a long-suffering God. And I thank and I praise him for my salvation. I also honor my, my husband and my pastor, Apostle. Ellen Anderson, uh, giving honor to Bishop Wright, to Pastors Nash, to Evangelist Gregory, to all the others uh, who are on the conference line, to those who are in the fivefold ministry on the conference line, as well as on Facebook Live. Um, I thank God for you. Amen. And for those who, uh, the other saints that are on the line, thanking God for each of you taking time out to listen and participate in our Facebook Live broadcast on every Sabbath. And I also want to encourage those who are not saved, those who have not committed and given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, who those who have not asked God to forgive them and they can walk in the newness of life. It is my hope and it is my desire that something today will cause you to change your way just as we just finished an awesome lesson about Saul, who was converted later to Paul. Amen. He made a change. Amen. And so don't let it be said too late because God is soon. Jesus is soon to come. So today um, I'm coming from the scripture Psalms 34 and 19. And it reads many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord oh delivered them out of them all. And my title today is, But the Lord Delivereth. The Lord Delivereth. Generous, generally, when we, people of people anywhere, anytime, when we face an affliction or a trial when things come upon us, happen upon us that we weren't aware of, we didn't know they were gonna come and that's how afflictions come. You know, we aren't we aren't foretold that they're gonna come. But scripture is saying many are the afflictions. Amen. But generally when they come as humans we usually say, Why me? You know, if you've been living a saved life, you you say, you know, I've been living a decent life. I, I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. I've been living. God told me to live. I've been walking. I've been paying my tithes, giving. I'm, I'm loving and kind to my neighbors. Um, I have been taking care of myself health-wise. I've been going to the doctor and, and, and taking those tests, those precautionary tests. But still, something came upon me. Hallelujah. And the first thing, I, I say this because I remember when I was stricken with cancer, first thing came to me, why me? I've been living a life of holiness, but the Holy Ghost told me, and I shall share it with you, why not you? Mm -hmm. We always want to put things on other people, but no, this is our time. This is our time. So today's lesson, I want to talk about four, four aspects, four parts, or five. One is afflictions. The next one is righteous. Mm -hmm. The yeah. next one, the number three is delivered, delivereth. And number four is all. all right. And the scripture says, many are the afflictions mm -hmm. of the righteous. All right. mm -hmm. Know ahead of time. We need we need to know ahead of time that there are going to be many, not just a few. 
And we define affliction as pain, mm -hmm. suffering, and any cause or source of this. Afflictions can be mental hurts, physical hurts, disappointments, problematic situations, yeah. and the list goes on and on. Afflictions also manifest themselves at various times of our lives. Some people may have encountered certain afflictions from birth. Mm -hmm. So they've learned how to deal with things throughout their lives. Some of some of us have become afflicted later on in life with health problems such mm -hmm. as kidney problems, arthritis, uh, cancers of all kinds. That's really what's going on a lot these days, cancers. Um, some with your children. That's an affliction when you have a seriously disobedient hard-headed child and mm -hmm. that just doesn't want to listen doesn't obey no matter what you do they're always uh -huh. into something and and you're constantly being called to the school or being called by the police that's an affliction on the family uh wow. people who lose their hair that's mm -hmm. an affliction yes that's an affliction mm -hmm. thank god for wigs amen praise the lord wow. um and then uh, the physical part, which is our physical man, which we know is dying daily, but that those afflictions that come upon uh, the body of man, those are the ones that really cause a lot of our anguish mm -hmm. and, and, and our uncertainty and wondering why and how come. Um, yeah. And we, we know that we have to eat right. And even when we eat right, we exercise. I know of a young lady who had, um, she had just come from the uh, hospital, doctor's appointment. And the doctor said she was wonderful and she was physically fit. But you know what? On her way home in the car, she died. And it wasn't a car accident. She died. Uh -huh. So you could be physically fit. Fit. The doctors can say you're in the best of health. But when God says it's your turn, mm -hmm. it's your turn. Amen. More importantly today, as we talk about afflictions, is the, uh, I like to address emotional afflictions. Um, because this is where the enemy really comes upon us as saints. To afflict us in our minds, in our thoughts. And uh, today there's a, a infestation of afflictions of in the mind and the re respect. If we look out at today's world, they, the respect for one another has just diminished. We're living in a world where everybody wants to be in the front. It's all about me, me, mm -hmm. me, me, my, my. You know, you, you see the cars, they're running ahead. They want to get ahead of you. Nobody wants to wait. Nobody wants to be patient. Uh, in the store, everybody wants to get up front. You know, people don't know the word, excuse me, pardon me, thank you. Just basic, simple principles that were taught years ago that it's 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 minuscule now you know very seldom people excuse me you know just want to knock you down sometime but the love and respect for our fellow man from from so many people mm -hmm. is really gone and yeah. the world has become a very self-centered world all right because it's wow. all about me and that's an affliction that is a mental affliction that uh, the saints of God, we do not have that. It's not all about us. It's not all about us all the time. We want and we are seeking and we're living so that people will see our light, that they will see the holiness in us mm -hmm. and that we can draw them because that's the way they're drawn by our light. Amen. Uh -huh. Isaiah 28 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, because he trusted in thee. And, and there's something about the mind that we must be aware of. When we think about, look at all these mass shootings that are going on. That's the mind. The enemy has captured so many people's mind that they just think they can do all these negative things, even in the games 
uh, the video games is all about killing and murder and blood. And that's 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 a bad affliction. Amen. That's not a good thing. It's all about the negativity and destroying one another. So we we as saints, as we as we continue to pray and seek God, which is what we we should do. It's important that we pray that we continue to seek the Lord for those to clear their minds. Yeah. It's the mind, it, you know. The uh, there's an ad. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, right. which yeah. is true, because. It's Satan that has gotten in the minds of so many people today. You know, when they have these mass murders and they, they kill the person who did it. And they say, we don't, we're going to look for the reason why. The reason why is the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy. Yeah, yeah. And then things are publicized so that then the enemy gets in somebody else's mind. Well, you know what? If he killed or she killed 15, I think I can do 30. It's all about the work of the enemy in the minds of these people. And that's why it's important also, as I stay on this, it, for, for parents, talk with your children. Know what they're doing. Watch what they're doing. Don't just allow them on this social media and you're not monitoring what's going on. Have some conversations with them. If they're staying to themselves too much, something is not right. Amen. Go back to having dinner at the dinner table where everybody is sitting together, talking and eating. Don't let one just go off by themselves. But I digress. But it's important because the mind, when the enemy, he wants to destroy our young people. He wants to destroy this world. But we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But we've got to do our part. We've got to stand up. Hallelujah. But I'm going to go back. I'm sorry. I digressed a little, but that I, I, I can't help that because right. it's so important that we, we really talk with our young people. Summer is coming. Have something prepared for them. And know where your children are. Mm -hmm. Know who they're going to. Amen. But I continue on afflictions. There are reasons why we have afflictions. We suffer because, number one, the ongoing, and it continues, it's the ongoing consequences of Adam and Eve sin in the garden. Mm -hmm. It started there and it's continuing because we're suffering the consequences of Eve being deceived and Adam knowingly going against the law and the rule of what God told him mm -hmm. not to do. It is, it is. Amen. Amen. We're suffering also the consequences of our own behaviors and actions. Sometimes we've yeah. done things. We haven't eaten properly. We haven't uh, dressed properly. Uh, we, we don't take care of ourselves. We're hard-headed and disobedient. We make wrong decisions. That brings on afflictions. Uh -huh. We suffer at the hand of the devil. He is still the principal of the air. That's right. He's still out there. He has power to afflict. And, and, and he has that power because he wants to do any and everything to cause us not to come to God or not to stay in God. We also suffer because we have the mind of Christ and we're living for him. This is all a part of living for Christ to suffer. Hallelujah. And lastly, another reason for our afflictions is because God, believe it or not, God can use us, use us in his suffering to further the cause of the kingdom. It, you know what? When you first, when you're young in Christ and you hear that it's a good thing to suffer, you really like, really? But you know what? As you get older in Christ, and you you suffer and people say it's okay you'll be able to help somebody as the years go on you see the value in your suffering yeah hallelujah glory to god amen my god my god you see it we we may not and we've heard many stories about job and joseph but they are those other people we may not be a job 
we haven't uh, gone through the things Job went through to that intensity right. or what Joseph went through. But people are watching our lives. So right. it's critical that as we go through people on our jobs, people in our family, when they see us going through having certain afflictions and going through, it's important how we live and how we go through them because we, as a as as a way of going through, we can bring and cause people to come to Christ when they see how we're standing. Please note that while God is involved in our suffering, we have to remember he will not allow us to be tried above what we are not able to bear. Amen. First Corinthians ten and thirteen. Afflictions. What does the scripture report? And how do they report afflictions? And you know I'm going to the one we talk about all the time. And that's Job. In Job 5, 6, and 7 it reads, Although affliction is cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. Mm-hmm. Yet right. man is born unto, unto trouble. As the sparks fly upward. Afflictions just don't come out of the air. They don't just spring up. They come from somebody. Amen. They come from some people. It's usually people. So, and, and then you know for yourself how you are in God. A lot of times, even today, people think afflictions come as a result of sin. Just as, the, as, as Job's so-called friends were trying to convince him. You need to repent. But if you know you are living a life of Christ, you know you're living holy each and every day, we aren't sinning every day. Because if you're sinning every day, you're a sinner. Amen. So you know how you are in Christ. So you know that this affliction must need be. This is something that God... He, he, he wants to get something out of me or sh- and as well as show you who you are in him and what you have in him. Then Isaiah 48 and 10 says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Yes, God will put and or allow afflictions to come our way. He puts us in unpleasant situations as a test. Are we going to go into a self-pity mode? Are we going to start complaining? What is our, as a result of what's going on, is that going to change our demeanor and how we interact with people and um, even how uh, how we think about God when we're going through? Man. God, why you put me through this? Some people actually get angry with God. They get upset. They get mad. Yeah. Some people actually curse God. Right. I've been doing all I can. I've been living. And I'm in this affliction? Yes. Uh-huh. But we must be happy. It says rejoice. Rejoice. Yeah. Acts t- 7 and 10 says... And delivered them out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. And it was only after Joseph had suffered and endured that he got to this point. Amen. Amen. It, It was years. It wasn't days. It was years Joseph suffered. To, to the suffering the affliction of first your brothers don't like you your brothers actually want to uh, tell your dad that you're dead yeah. you're being sold to another country a foreign country he didn't even uh-huh. speak their language he had to learn their language then being put in various situations those are afflictions uh-huh. but Joseph endured there's no, there are no scriptures that we read where Joseph counted the years of his pain that he caused, he charged God falsely. All right. It's not written, but he was just as 
as as Job. He held fast his integrity. And neither of them had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right, all right. My God, my God. Then there are other affliction scriptures, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. And it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and ex a, an eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. If we remain faithful and steadfast in Christ, these are considered light. Hallelujah. They're considered light in terms of what we are expecting to, to receive once we get in another place. Once we move on wow. and, 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 and we get that new life, when we get that new glory, when we, are, uh, when we see Jesus and all is well. And he says, Amen. These will be considered light afflictions. And, and even nowadays, sometimes when we go through certain things, once we're through, we say, wow, you know what? When you really think back, our good days are better than our bad days. Amen. When we, when, once we come through and we settle ourselves, we can say, you know, that wasn't as difficult. When you're going against the grain, you're going against the tide, the things are more difficult. We have to submit ourselves. And I'm, I'm learning a lot myself. There's a submission when there's an affliction. If we give in, I don't mean give in to the affliction where we just say, okay, I want to die. But settle ourselves so that God can direct us and in the way in which he wants us to go. To, 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 to rest in the affliction that I can't, I can't do it. I can't fix it, but I can rest in God. Once I recognize what I'm going through, once I recognize what this affliction is all about, what kind of an affliction is it? Is this the enemy who's coming against my mind so much? Then what I need to do is to make sure I have scriptures all around me. He whose mind is stayed on him, he'll keep him in perfect peace because we trust in him. God's word is true. If it's a physical affliction, then I need to do whatever I can do to, to assist myself in that. Um, the other day, uh, a prophetess told me that afflictions will talk to you or a condition will talk to you. Condition will tell you, and we're talking about physical will say, you know, you have this. And we all we have a habit of wanting to claim things. Claim, right. claim. You have arthritis. Claim the pain. Claim the pain. And the pain is like, yeah, come to me, come to me. But no, what she was she what she told me, we need to speak to that. Didn't Jesus say, speak to the mountains? Yes. Speak to the condition. Yeah, you might be in my body, but you're coming out. No, I feel the pain, but God, when Jesus died, he suffered. He took that on the cross for me. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be without pain. I'm not going to hold on. I'm not going to claim, claim, claim. This is my this. this is my no. The devil is alive. So we have to speak to ourselves. We have to speak to these conditions. And believe it. Don't Amen. just speak and don't believe. But we have to believe it. That's right. If Jesus said do it, then do it. There are other kinds of afflictions that people have. Um, in 2 Timothy 1 and 18, it says, Be thou not, be not, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony, testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but... Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, 
which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. We can't be ashamed and want to stop doing the work that God has called us before we received this particular affliction. He knows our capabilities. I was ashamed when, when and, and I, I'm talking about it more now than ever, but I actually was ashamed when I was stricken with, with cancer. I was like, this is terrible. I'm not going to tell anybody about this. You know, it's like, it's a character flaw. It's a salvation flaw. And that's the way I looked at it at that time. But God did heal me. I've been healed, thank the Lord. But it's a testimony of what God can do and what God does do. He is a healer. If people didn't get sick to be healed, we wouldn't know of his abilities. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was all put upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So we, we must continue to know, to trust, and believe that these afflictions, and, and, and afflictions can be, uh, some women are unable to bear children, high blood pressure, kidney problems, arthritis, chronic aches and pains. Also, other afflictions include people are unemployed. If you're unemployed, you have no money. You have financial problems. You have, again, people need better housing or housing because they're homeless people. Their mothers and fathers out with their children and have no place to go. There are people who have no forms of transportation and certainly transportation is needed. Again, their children are out of control. And, and we can't say all of the children who are out here doing these damnable things were, did not receive training. Many, some of them had, have good parents, parents who taught them, who chastised them, who whipped them when they should have been whipped, but the children are just hard headed and disobedient and give in to the whims of the devil and their friends. So we can't say all these children, again, we can't say all these children that just, but parents don't want their children out here doing these things. And, and, they, and, and, and they, 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 some parents will tell you, I'm at my wit's end because I just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But what we can do to help them is continue to pray, to pray, uh, to pray, pray, that these children will come to themselves, that they will see uh -huh. themselves. And so the list goes on and on of afflictions. There, 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 like I said, many afflictions, mm -hmm. all kinds of afflictions. We can't, oh, we can't even list them all. Amen. And then I'm going to go back to one of the most challenging is the warfare of the mind. Mm -hmm. In Philippians right. 2 and 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? Jesus wanted to do that which pleased his father. And in doing so, what did Jesus? Jesus said, I will leave. He was willing to leave glory, to leave his heavenly home, to leave the splendor and the glory of royalty. Anna, my God. He was willing that he would come and allow God to make him a body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be made a little lower than the angels. He was also willing. He didn't know at the time that he got this body, the excruciating pain that he was going to feel. Oh, my God. But he endured it. He endured it. He didn't change his mind on us Amen. when he was afflicted. Hallelujah. When he was embarrassed, he was tormented. He was humiliated. Hallelujah. And then lastly, if we remember on the cross for a space of time, his father forsook him yes. because of the sins that were upon him. All because of us. Hallelujah. He accepted. Oh, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Jesus accepted being afflicted. Hallelujah. And if he accepted, how much more us? Mm. We accept the Amen. affliction that has been placed upon us. Amen. Oh, my God, my God. He's worthy. 
Hallelujah. And we're worthy. We should be counted. And, 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 and it says the righteous. Righteous is meaning we're acting and we're doing, we're living upright. We're virtuous and we're morally right. And I'm just going to say we're living a saved, sanctified, and a holy life. All right. Glory to God. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous. Right. The righteous. Now we're going to go back to Job. Job was a righteous man. Glory right. to God. Amen. Job 22 and 3 it says, Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Job's friend wanted him to acknowledge that he sinned. Mm -hmm. Because of, again, because of his situation. Sin was not a cause of Job's going through. All right, all right. He was a righteous man. If you're righteous, if you're living holy and you know you're living holy, don't allow the enemy, because the enemy is going to be the first to say. Mm -hmm. All right. It's something, you've done something wrong in your life, the reason why you're, you're, you're going through. You've been, you have this affliction on you. Your family will say, uh -huh. I thought you say you served God. I thought you were saved and sanctified. And you're oh. going through this and you're experiencing it. You're going to have that. People will come to you and say things. But you have to maintain your integrity. Mm -hmm. I'm not going through this because of anything wrong I have done. That's right. All right. Then he goes on in Job 27 and 6 and it says, My righteousness I hold fast. Oh. And I will not let go. Let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Is your conscience clear? Job was clear mm -hmm. that his name, well, I'm, I'm going to put it this way. His name was written in the last book of life. He knew what he was doing. And if we remember in the early parts of the book of Job where he offered sacrifices, mm -hmm. not only for himself, but his children. Yeah. He said, peradventure, they have done something wrong. They've sinned. He knew he had a clean slate. You know when you have a clean slate. All right. You know when your name is still written in the book of life. You know your name hasn't been taken out. Righteous. It's a blessing in being righteous. Amen. Yeah. Psalms 33 and 1 says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is commonly mm. to the upright. Very, very clearly it says rejoice. 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 It didn't say cry. It says rejoice. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Psalm 34, 15 says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. That lets us know right there. He hears us. He's just at this point of our affliction. He's not responding, but he does hear us. And we have to trust and know and believe that he does hear us. Amen. Then Psalms 34 and 17, just two verses down. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. He's going to deliver out of all. All right. God is not death. Jesus is not death. The Holy Ghost is not death. Yeah. And he's listening to our words. It's uh -huh. perfectly, you know, and, and, and we have to understand. It's, it's perfectly okay. God wants us to talk to him and with him. He yeah. wants us to, he's acquainted with our sorrows, but it's nothing wrong with, him, with us sitting there and talking however you pray. His prayer is talking to God, talking to him, letting him know how you feel, even though he knows how you feel. But it's like it's like therapeutic. Let it out. Talk to him. Let him know how you feel, what you're going through. But be assured that he does hear you Amen. and know that he hears you. Remove all doubt in trusting him and believing him. Amen. But it's but it's important that we continue. To talk to God. 
In wow. Job, uh, I'm sorry, no, Psalm 63 and 68 and 3, Psalm 68, 3. It says, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. There's a time when we're going through that, and, and our rejoicing has to be genuine, not no phony, oh, thank you, thank you, but from the heart. Rejoicing in the Lord, appreciating God, loving loving Him, letting Him know that you love Him, even while you're going through. Even though I'm suffering, I still love you, Lord. I still appreciate you, Lord. Lord, I still need you, and I'm depending on you. But that, that rejoicing is beyond the normal of your regular rejoicing. All right. And then it says in Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Mm. The righteous, we're righteous. Yeah. Run it into it and is safe, knowing that we can go into the Lord. We can hide in God, hide in his word. That's how we hide. We hide in our faith and our belief and our trust in his word, that his word is true, yeah. that his word will never fail. His word will never darken. Hallelujah. That all of his promises are yea, yea, and amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's just that we have to wait on the Lord. Oh, my God, I thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's safety and there's consolation in the word. It's something about running and hiding in God's word that as we grow in him, the more we understand that that word will saturate us and, and, and give us a sense of comfort. And give us comfort in knowing that God does care because that's what we need to know. Amen. He does care for us. Even though we're going through, he still cares for us. He still loves us. We're still his child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And at this moment, for the righteous, and I, I, I wrote uh, for the righteous, to the righteous is at this point that we should know that our helmet is properly on. And the helmet is there to protect our mind. Again, it's a mind thing. Mm -hmm. We have to know. We can't be confused. Oh, God, you're not there. But God is there. He said he was there all the time. Amen. He said he would never leave us nor all forsake us. Yeah. So even though we're going through afflictions and persecutions, he's still there. Yeah. The question is, are we still there? Amen. Are we where we should be? Glory to God. Are we not allowing ourselves to get confused, complacent, or take back because we're in a state of affliction? All right. All right. We have to continuously remind ourselves, I'm righteous. I'm a child of God. Isaiah 3 and 10 says, say ye to the righteous. This is what it's saying to us. That it shall be well with him. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. It's well with us. We are going to eat the fruit of our doings. We're going to be able to take advantage of how we've withstood, how we've stand, and how we've endured temptations and frustrations. Even in our afflictions, mm -hmm. we have not changed our mind. We have not given up. Some people backslide when they go through afflictions. And that's the time you need to draw closer to him. Amen. We can't allow our afflictions and the negativity that goes on in our lives to say, I'm going to leave God. No. Uh -huh. We can't allow... Even even people in our ears to say, girl, you going to go through all of that? Girl, you going to take that? I wouldn't take that if I was you. Uh -huh. But you're not me. And I'm going to stand. And I'm going to allow God to use me in my afflictions. Glory to God. Now, the beginning of the scripture says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. righteous. Our next point is, it says... The next part of that scripture says, but the Lord, <laughs> the Lord, yes. the Lord, the creator of heavens and earth. 
the I am that I am, the one that made the sun, the moon, the stars in the heaven, the one that spoke to the waters and told them to obey. We're talking about the Lord, the Lord that told Lazarus after three days, get up. Hallelujah. We're talking about the Lord who who, who told uh, so many in the, in the, in the uh, Old Testament scriptures. He, when they thought they were dead, they were sleeping, but they woke up. We're talking about the Lord who, who, uh, uh, the Lord who did, who told the leopards, be clean, Jesus. He told them, be cleansed. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the creator, the one who said, I am that I am. The I one am. that wakes us up every morning, not the alarm clock. The oh, one that God. keeps our mind in perfect peace. The one that allows us to have activity of our limbs. The one that allows us to be able to speak, to be able to hear, to be able to walk. The one that's, that allows us to breathe. The one that created us fearfully and wonderful. The Lord. It was the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And it said, the Lord delivereth them out, out of them all. Mm -hmm. Delivereth. Delivereth means to hand over or to leave for another. Delivereth. He's the one that's going to bring us out. Then deliver, the word deliver is defined as set free of everything entirely. And so we know from the very de definition, he says, delivereth out of them all, then we know we're going to come completely out. Yeah. yeah. When he delivers from sickness, he delivers totally. He doesn't leave any residue in. Not He's right. not uh, like some in some surgeries, they forget and they leave uh, uh, an instrument in the body. When he does it, he delivers from them all. Oh, oh. In Genesis 16 and 11, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard thy affliction. Now we know this is about, Sarah had told her husband to go and impregnate, impregnate the maiden. I can't think of her name right now. But, and once, 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 Haggai. right, Haggai, thank you. And once Haggai became pregnant, Sarai got angry with her Man. for no cause. Now, how many times we've done, think about on your job, you've done what your supervisor wanted you to do. Now, all of a sudden, the supervisor's been out of shape with you uh -huh. for no reason. Right. But God heard her affliction because mm -hmm. she had run away. Mm -hmm. But he told her to go back. He was going to straighten mm -hmm. it out, in which he did. Wow. Sometimes we get in those afflictions of people who want to harass us. They want to do us all kind of ways. They, you dislike. You can be on a job and be disliked just because you're sanctified. Amen. You're doing your job. You're not preaching. You're not teaching on the job. But just because you live a sanctified life, people will want to talk about you and treat you all kind of ways. But God, I thank God for his deliverance power. But God, he will step in and he'll deliver. He'll change the hearts of the people. And once he does it, he does a complete job. So when, when Haggai went back, all was well. All was well. So then we go to Exodus 3 and 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, mm -hmm. which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. All right. Then we go down to the 17th verse, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt mm -hmm. unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perpsites and the Hivites and the Jebusites 
unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, the children of Israel were in Egypt for over 400 years. That's right. All right. So this affliction, you know, at first, when they originally got there, they were given the wonderful land and, and, and all was well because the Pharaoh knew and, and so was well. But as time went on, they were afflicted and they were praying. Now for 400 years, think about it. There were many generations that did not, um, they endured the affliction but they didn't see the deliverance mm -hmm. at that time. It was generations and generations saw, but God still blessed and they were brought out of that affliction in God's time period. That's, it. That's, That's what we have to remember. What God's time frame is not like our time frame. Amen. His Amen. timing is totally different than our timing. And, and and let me just say, even for the, the, the children of Israel who did not come out of Egypt during the affliction, God has a time. They they were at rest and peace. Those that died, they were still at rest and peace. Just uh -huh. as those, even now, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, our deliverance can come in a couple of ways. It can come while uh -huh. we're living. But once we die, we're in the presence of the Lord. So mm -hmm. that affliction is no longer there. Amen. <laughs> so we'll get delivered. We're delivered either way. Think about it. Then in Psalms 18 and 48, and this is Dan, uh, David. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast right. delivered me from the violent man. You know, David was a man of war, mm -hmm. constant yeah. war. He was always fighting, but God delivered him. God will deliver us. There are times we have probably been delivered and we didn't even know in this day and time, traveling and working and going different places where the enemy might have wanted to rob us. But God allowed uh, that person to walk by and didn't do anything. Yes. He did no harm, no hurt. I was robbed once, but the man didn't give me, didn't, didn't harm me physically. He took my purse and he took my fur, but that was it. I was not harmed. And it, there's a right. difference, you know. God does protect His people, mm -hmm. but because David was a man of war, he was constantly around violence and and and, and ill repute. But God protected wow. him. Now, this other one I want to talk about is in Daniel. Daniel 6 and 27. He delivereth and rescueth. Delivereth and rescueth. And he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who have delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Mm -hmm. And I say, is there anything too hard for God? No, no. Now, that was an affliction. To be cast in a den with hungry lions, purposely hungry lions. It doesn't read where David, Daniel, went in crying, screaming, begging to be released. He went in, I want to say, in submission, knowing who he served. Just as the three Hebrew boys. I'm not careful to praise you, O king. We know in whom we serve. I'm paraphrasing. We know who is able to bring us out. So it's almost as if when you're in certain situations of affliction, you have to rest, be rested in the Lord. Mm -hmm. wow. Knowing that he is going to bring you out. There's some situations, some affliction you can't do anything about. There are many programs on TV that show these strong men, they're fighting the lions and all of that. But Daniel didn't do that. He went in. And he, I believe they say he laid down. Mm -hmm. He went to sleep. That's a rest. That's a peace. Tired of the basa, knowing that God. See, and, and, and that's where we have to get. Knowing in that place, knowing and trusting God. 
with no doubt, total confidence that he will bring us out all right. Amen. He will deliver us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then in Hallelujah. Acts 7 and 10, it says, And delivered, this is about Daniel, and delivered him out of all his afflictions and oh. gave him favor and wisdom mm -hmm. in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Who knows when we go through our afflictions, we don't know what God is going to do, how he's going to highlight us, how he's going to lift us up, how he's going to bring us out. You don't know the benefits of, of serving and going through. Yeah. Glory to God. And then the last word is all. All means everything, everyone, wholly, entirely. Job one twenty two. In all this, mm -hmm. Job sinned not, mm -hmm. nor charged God Foolish. foolishly. Yes. In all he went through. How many, I don't know many people who lost everything that Job lost. Amen. And then had a wife who was, she was really foolish to, to tell him, you know, just gone and curse God and die. See, that's what people with they want you to go. That's not an eat, and that's not an easy route. No, no, no. We have to stand, and we have to stand fast. There's a monkey glue and a gorilla glue, but we got to stand Holy Ghost glue, stuck on God. Amen. And then we're talking about the word all. We will rejoice in thy salvation, Psalm 20 and 5. And in the name of our Lord, we will sit, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. All. all. Not just one, but all. Mm -hmm. And then it says, now, the Lord will fulfill all our petitions in that scripture. Then we go to Psalms 34 and 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> all times. And then it says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So no matter what you're going through, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll bless the Lord in the morning. I'll bless the Lord when I'm in pain. I'll bless the Lord when I'm down. I'll bless the Lord when I'm broke. I'll bless the Lord when I don't know which way to go. I will bless the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lift him up. Magnify him. Glorify him. Thanking him. Appreciate him at all times. No matter what. I will bless the Lord. Amen. Because it's he that has brought me this far, not me. Had it not been for the Lord, I would not be where I am right now. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Then it says, Psalms 34 and 4, it says, uh, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. My fear that this affliction is not going to go away. He will deliver me from that. All right. Psalms 44 and 8 says, In God we boast all the day long mm -hmm. and praise thy name forever. Selah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can praise the Lord all the day long. We can glorify him and lift him up. And in fact, when you're going through afflictions, that's the time to do it. Amen. That's the time to keep our mind stayed on him. To keep him, lift him up. To glorify him. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know you're going to deliver me. Lord, I know you're going to set me free. I love you and I glorify you and I thank you. Lord, it was you that brought me out of this situation years ago. It was you that saved me when I was on my way to hell. It was you that res rescued me. Hallelujah. It was you that kept me, oh God, from hurt, from harm and danger. It's you that's Oh, look, watch over me during the midnight season when it's evil all around. Glory to God. Ah, yeah, Lord. And then scripture, Psalm 62 and 8 says, trust in him at all times. Ah, yeah, yeah, la, da, ba, ha. Psalm 62 and 8. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is our, a refuge for us. Trust in him at all times. 
Not just in the mon on Mondays, not just on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday when you go to church, but every day as often as you can. Keep your trust in him. Mm -hmm. And Psalms 116, 12 says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits yeah. toward me? Mm -hmm. What can we render? What can we render but praises unto him? What can we render but glorifying him? What can we render but lifting him up? He is the one. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. That's what we can render. Amen. Our love, our support, our letting our light shine, our giving unto him, our, our, our faithfulness to him. A constant faithfulness, not not being faithful today and not to and not today. You know, uh, again, one of the days we really faithful and we think about God in our church days, and you know. But what about the other days? All the time. All the time. He wants us to be refined and fitted for His use, holiness. Righteousness mm -hmm. all the days of our lives. Oh. Isaiah 48 and 10 says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. Mm -hmm. I have chosen thee with the furnace of affliction. And mm -hmm. I've read this again. But he has refined us because we've gone through. We're more sensitive to him. We're, we're more understanding of, of, of human nature. We're more understanding of the cost uh, to, to go to glory. We're more uh, appreciative that we can maintain a stand in holiness, that we fought a good fight, that we're continuing to fight a good fight, that decisions we made to be holy and righteous, we're continuing on despite what other people say. When the enemy comes in, we've stood the test. Because we didn't give in. That's it. Mm -hmm. We've been refined because we've gone through afflictions. Ah, yeah, my God. Hallelujah. We've been refined because we stood the test. We didn't come out of the fire. Glory to God. If the gold came out too early, it was not going to be purified. And we want to be pure. We want to be holy. We want to be righteous. We want to be exactly what God wants us to be. Exactly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the only way is for us to go through our tests, to go through their afflictions, so we can hear from God even the more. We become, become more sensitive to what He wants us to do, how He wants us to do in living this life of holiness, this life of righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That we can lift Him up and we can praise Him. Oh my God, my God. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For our light affliction, mm, yeah. which is but for a moment. A moment. Yeah. It's only a moment. To us, it seems like a lifetime. But it's just for a moment. Yeah. Working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Right. Because it's not all about this natural stuff that we see. Mm -hmm. But it's the glory that shall be revealed. Hung it up our soul unto us. Uh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even today. In our church school lesson. It was talking about Saul on the road to Damascus. He was afflicted. God chose. And I'm going to use these words. A sinner. To afflict him. Because he knew where he wanted him to go. He knew what he wanted Saul to do. He knew what was in Saul. He knew Saul had the word. He knew Saul had the tenacity. He knew Saul had the courageousness. If this man had gotten, this man had gotten an edict. To go and corral all the saints of God up and take them back that they might be persecuted. 
Kandi Abasa. But God stepped in and afflicted him with blindness. Glory to God. Because he knew this man had the goods to preach the gospel to my people that I'm going to bless him and send him to. Hallelujah. Wow. And even in being delivered from his eyes in it from his blindness. Hallelujah. And Paul preached. His name was changed. And Paul preached. But Paul was afflicted. My God, in later years, he was afflicted, but he continued on. God knew what he had in him. God knows what you have for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Bear your affliction. Hallelujah. Knowing that there is going to be an end to these afflictions. They're but for a light moment. Hallelujah. If he doesn't, uh, he doesn't change or erase or move that affliction here on earth we shall see Amen. him we shall see him in peace we'll see him without affliction glory to god because and then he will change because he's going to change our bodies yes. hallelujah Amen. hey glory to god in jeremiah 29 and 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you yes. said the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil, to All give right. you an expected mm -hmm. end. Our end is peace with him. Thoughts of evil. We shouldn't think that God is doing something evil because we're afflicted. Amen. It's a peace. Let peace dwell in you. It says, Psalm 16 and 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence. His presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. There are pleasures in God. There are pleasures when we suffer afflictions for his name's sake. When we go through, when we are steadfast and we're unmovable, but joying and rejoicing always in the Lord, it is him that we move and we have our being. Remember that we're fearfully and we're wonderfully made. And he will not put any more on us than we can bear. We can go through every test, every trial, every persecution, every affliction with God on our side. Yes. He said he would never leave us. He will never forsake us. Trust him. He is our shield and our buckler. We can run into him and we can hide. We can ask him to hold us in the hollow of his hands. And even in the affliction, it's not a constant and it's not a, a heavy because he will lift up the burden. Oh, yeah. He will lighten that load. He will give us peace even in our bodies. We will not always hurt. We will not always be in pain. But he'll give us peace. Allah, hey God, in the name of Jesus. He will give us that peace that we need. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, I ask that you will touch. Ah, yeah, Lord, I thank you. We're blessed, Lord God. We honor you. We glorify you. We praise you, Lord God. We magnify you. We lift you up, Lord God. We give you honor and praise, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you will touch right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Lord, that you will move throughout the land and the nation, oh God, of so many people, oh God. Bless your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, ask that you will send your comfort as never before, Lord God, that you will touch from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. Move in a miraculous way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Move out every affliction, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Dry up every form of cancer, Lord God, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Move by your power. Move by your might, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, dry it up. Dry it up. Dry it up, dry it up oh God. Oh God, that they go back and they get a report, Lord God, is gone. That you might be glorified. Oh God, that you might be praised, Lord God. Oh, we ask you to will touch in the bodies, Lord. Let the kidneys work and operate as they should. Bring down that high blood 
blood pressure right now in the name of Jesus. We speak peace to that body in the name of Jesus. Oh God, the move and the pains, the aches and pains, oh God, from 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 the, uh, cancer, Lord God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, bless, oh God, and ask that you will touch, oh God. Oh God, for your glory, for your honor, yes. touching the knees, Lord God, yes. touching the elbows, touching the yes. fingers, Lord God, arthritis of all sorts, oh God, yes. in the name of Jesus, Lord God, move through every joint, Lord God, through the marrows, the bones, oh God, the blood vessels, yes. the muscles, and the tendons, oh my God, my God, oh yeah, yeah, oh yes, Lord, we were fearfully, wonderfully made, you know all about the bodies, Lord. Lord God, and ask that you will touch, Lord God, that you will deliver, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, show yourself strong on their behalf, Lord God, as a testimony of your goodness, of your mercy, of your long suffering, oh God, in these last and these evil days. God, we ask that you will touch even in the minds, Lord God. Oh, yeah, Oh, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Deliver, Lord God, set free. Move in households everywhere, Lord. Touch the children. Children, the way with children in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in families, uh, peace in homes, Lord God, that you will might abide even the more in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and if there are any unsaved on the line, touch right now, Lord God. Deliver them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Save them right now, Lord God, as they repent of their sins, oh God. Repent and believe, oh God, that you are, that you died one day, Lord God, but that you also rose, oh God. For I our sins right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise. Uh, there is none like you in all the earth, Lord God. We need you every day, Lord. We need you every hour of the day, Lord God. Have that own way. Have that own way in us, Lord. Move by your power, Lord God. Strengthen, oh God. Fortify, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us where we might be weak, oh God. But build us up that we'll be stronger in you, Lord God. Those things that are not pleasing unto you, Lord, purge us, that we will bring forth more fruit, Lord God, more fruit of righteousness, of love, of peace, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we ask that you will bless and move today in a mighty way. Uh, bless our leader, Lord God, strengthen him even the more, Lord God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, uh, if God touch those that are going through depressing states, Lord God. Bless those, oh God, that have lost loved ones right now in the name of Jesus. Move in the name of Jesus. Yes, Move, oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we praise you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we honor you and we glorify you. Lord, we thank you for those thank graduates, you, Lord. Lord God, that you will touch them, Lord. Yes. Those who graduated from eighth grade, from yes. high school, from college and grad school. Lord, that you will make that path clear, Lord God. That you will open up doors of employment for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know the very desires of their hearts, Lord God. Yes. And we ask that you will touch them even more. Oh, God, that as they go through this summer, Lord, the summer will be a safe summer for our children, oh, God. We bind the act of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We come against them. Oh, yeah, yeah. He come to steal and destroy, but, God, we come to you, Lord, knowing that you have all power in your hand, oh, God, to give us life and that more abundantly in these last and these evil days. We thank you. Oh, God, we glorify you and we praise you. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, Lord God. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless on us, line, oh God. Every person, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, touch them right now. Move in their lives even more. Open doors, oh God. Fix situations, oh God. Answer those prayers, Lord God. Give them an answer, Lord God. In the message name of Jesus, we give you glory today. Yeah, we give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, and Lord bless those on Facebook, oh God. Yeah, Touch yeah, them. Yeah, bless yeah. their families as well, Lord. Yeah, those yeah. that might listen to this broadcast yeah, later, Lord, we ask that you will continue to yeah, let yeah. your mercy be great. Yeah. Oh God, that you will continue to shine upon them, yeah, oh God. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, be thou glorified. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be thou glorified. Yeah. Be thou glorified. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank and we yes. praise you, Lord. We thank you. Yes, Lord. 
and we praise you. We worship you. We adore you, Lord, for all that you've done and for that you're going to do. In the master's name of Jesus. Oh, God, be thou glorified. In the name of Jesus. If I were to sing a song, I would sing, draw me nearer. And the words are, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith yes. and be closer, drawn mm-hmm. to thee. Draw me nearer, yeah. nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Hallelujah. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, nearer, to thy precious mm-hmm. bleeding side. Yes, Draw us nearer to thee, Lord God. Nearer and nearer to thee, Lord God. That we will do those things that please you, Lord God. That we will be the apple of thine eye, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. In the master's name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I now turn the service back to our apostle, Apostle Anderson. Continue to keep him in prayer. Continue to continue to bless own campground ministry, international ministries. Amen. That the Lord will continue to bless the ministries that are all overseas, oh God. That God will bless those pastors that are overseas yes, under Lord. the auspices of old campground international ministries. That they will be and do those things that God wants them to be. That they will add God will add on to their churches such as should be added. Yes. That the anointing will be great upon their lives and in their services. That He they will perform those things that God desires them to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank God for the word of God today from our evangelist, Evangelist Francis Anderson. And today I want you to be reminded that the subject that she spoke on concerns what we're dealing with for the rest of the week in the book of James chapter 1. Amen. And I just want to reiterate this because she had given us a powerful statement. And that powerful statement is that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord delivers them out of them all. And then in the New Testament, we find in the book of James that you've been invited to read James chapter 1. And let me just do James 1 to uh, this first five. It says, James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings. Listen to this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So today we heard a powerful message on of what to do in the time of afflictions and how the men and women of God in the scripture have been delivered and set free. And she prayed the prayer of faith today for you, that you might be able to be delivered and set free. And so today I want you to understand that this is an awesome message for the saints, that no matter what you're going through, it is a light affliction that God is going to bring you out. And he's going to bring you out with a testimony of how good he is. And so today, please allow yourself now to believe the word that you heard. Again, it's in the word of God, both in the old and in the new. You that are going through, know this, it's for a moment. And that moment is soon to be over. And you're to give God glory and to testify to others that he delivered and set you free. So today we give God glory for the word of God in training concerning Saul of Tarshish, who became Paul, one of the greatest evangelists and missionaries the world has known, to bring to us the things of Christ, how much he suffered and went through, even including to be beheaded by the Emperor Nero. I want you to understand that you are not going to escape. You're not going to get out of afflictions. You're not going to get out of sickness. You're not going to get out of trials and tribulations. But you will understand this, that the Spirit of God that was preached to you today will deliver and bring you out. So God bless you. God keep you. You're on Facebook Live. God make His face to shine upon you. 
I'm just pleased that the word of God was spoken to us and brought to us in such a way that you know you too can be delivered. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson along with Evangelist Francis Anderson and the Lighthouse Evangelistic Prayer Cathedral pastors by Pastor Fur and Janelle Nash along with our teacher Evangelist Doris wishing you a very beautiful day today and a happy holiday on tomorrow. Know this, it's time to get back into the Word of God. Fast with us on Monday at midnight to Tuesday at 3 p.m. Fast with us on Monday at midnight to Tuesday at 3 p.m. And next Sabbath, the month of June, will be our Sabbath of communion. So don't forget, you're going to share with us on Facebook Live and on the conference line, communion. And so until we come together again, I invite you to share in your giving, your tithes, and your offerings to the ministry so that we can be a blessing to, as the wife has said, to the ones that are in foreign lands. We have churches in Pakistan, churches in India, churches throughout the continent of Africa, and we want to be able to help them to move forward by you helping us. You know how to give now through Zelle. You know how to give now through Cash App. And now you know how to give through sending your check to our headquarters. God bless you today. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. And for those of you that are on Facebook Live, until the Evangelist Francis come again to speak a word to you or to hear her in person, God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. Now for those of you that are on the conference line,